most of the actual edits you're going to make to your mesh will be via brushes. To access all the different brushes that come with ZBrush, you can go right here to the brush button. Click that and you'll open up the palette of default loaded up brushes. You can also open that menu by pressing down B on your keyboard, just one time, you don't have to hold it. You can find even more default brushes by opening up the light box right here. But keep in mind that you don't need all of these nice brushes to get a good project done. In fact, if you watch my Next Steps tutorial series, you'll find that we can get a lot done with just four or five brushes. Brushes are highly customizable and you can get a lot of adjustments done to them in just a few simple steps. Here at the top, you can find a lot of brush options, for example, the size, draw size, focal shift, and more. However, I much prefer using the spacebar shortcut. If you press down spacebar and hold it, a temporary little brush menu will pop up with all of your most important brush options. The cool thing about this menu is that it'll pop up wherever your mouse is currently hovering so that you don't have to stop working and go find your options in the menus. The first very important brush setting you need to know is the draw size. All this does is it literally changes the size of the area that your brush affects. A bigger draw size will affect a larger area, while a smaller draw size will be more precise and make a smaller area change. Next, we have focal shift. If you're a Photoshop user, you might think of this as the hardness or softness of a brush. If I make the focal shift a higher number, you'll see that the inside circle is getting smaller. The inside circle represents where the brush is being applied at 100% intensity, whereas the outside circle represents where the brush is being applied at 0% intensity. In between the two circles, there's a fall off. If I make the focal shift high, you'll notice the brush becomes very soft and pointy compared to the overall size of the brush. However, if I make the focal shift really low, for example, negative 80 or so, you'll notice that the brush is much harder in shape, much less fall off. Next, we have the Z intensity, which is the intensity with which your brush is going to affect your mesh. A higher Z intensity will create higher edits. So here we are at 23 Z intensity versus 91 Z intensity. You see the difference? If I turn it down really low to maybe two, you'll barely see anything. Next, we have Z add and Z sub. Every brush is set to one of these two settings. Z add basically adds to the, your mesh or it pulls away from the normal like this, whereas Z sub pushes in and subtracts from your mesh like this. Here's a really cool tip. If while you are sculpting, you press down the Alt button, you'll notice that it inverts whatever the default setting is. So if your brush is naturally Z add, it will start Z subbing if you hold down Alt. And if your brush is naturally Z sub, it's going to start Z adding when you press Alt. Next, we have RGB mode. By pressing RGB, I'm going to actually make my brush start laying down color onto my mesh. So I'm going to select a color, this red is fine, and start applying my brush. And you'll see that we're both making 3D edits and color edits. To turn off 3D edits, we can simply turn off Z add. And look at that, it just becomes a coloring brush. The M button here stands for material channel. If you turn that on, you can now paint with a material or matte cap. Let's choose gold and give it a try. MRGB will apply both the material and a color, like this. You can combine all these channels as you'd like to create even cooler effects. Of course, we can't talk about brushes without discussing alphas. Alphas are black and white images. You can find the default ones right here. And they define how the brush gets applied, as in what shape it gets applied in. The white part of the alpha is where the brush will be applied at 100%, and the black part is where it will be applied at 0%. To choose an alpha, you can simply press your spacebar button, find the alpha tab, and pick one here. And you'll notice that it also updates in the alpha tab on your UI. Do you see how we are applying that star? again and again and again. 
you can make your own alphas in ZBrush or in Photoshop or wherever else you'd like, and you can import alphas right here. Next, we have texture. If you apply a texture to your brush, such as this one, it will be applied as you apply your brush like this. Make sure that RGB mode is on though, or it won't be applied. Next, we have stroke types. You can find the stroke types right here in your brush options on the side or right here. For this demonstration, I'm going to apply the star alpha for ease of seeing it. First, we have the dots type stroke, which will literally just apply the alpha over and over again in a little dot pattern like this. Then we have drag rect, which stands for drag rectangle. If you click and drag, it will apply the alpha one time and let you define how big or small you want it and at what direction you'd like. This is great if you want to treat your brushes kind of like a little stamp. Next is freehand, which works the same exact way as dot mode, but it has a shorter interval between each dot to get a slightly smoother look. Next, we have spray and color spray which will apply your alpha in a spray pattern, almost like if you had a little spray can. And drag dots works the same way that drag rect does, but it does not let you choose the size of your alpha. And instead, it just gives you a lot of flexibility on where to put it. It chooses the size of your alpha based on the size of your brush. So if I make my brush smaller, I've got a smaller star. If you end up customizing a brush and you really like it and you'd like to use it again in the future, make sure to go to brush and save as, and this will save it out as a brush preset file that is easily loadable right here in load brush in ZBrush. This is also how you can load up any brushes that you downloaded from the internet or you bought somewhere. So there are brushes like the move brush that allow you to grab and drag part of the mesh. The snake hook is similar to that. There are cloth type brushes that use dynamic simulation to make cloth folds. There are curve brushes that allow you to extrude something along a curve. There are knife type brushes that allow you to cut your model. There are insert mesh brushes that allow you to insert extra meshes on top of your mesh. There are VDM brushes that allow you to insert alphas that are very 3D and let you do undercuts. There are groom brushes that interact well with fiber mesh grooms. There are simple click and drag brushes that allow you to change the surface of your mesh. And so much more.